So this problem says two pipes on the same elevation convey water and oil with a specific gravity of 0.88. The two pipes are connected by a U-tube manometer with a monometric liquid having a specific gravity of 1.25. If the monometric liquid in the, that limb connecting the water pipe is two meters higher than the other, the pressure difference between the two pipes is most close to what? So here we have two pipes. One's carrying water and the other is carrying oil. Now, if you can just imagine it, the flow of these fluids are going into and coming out of the screen at us. So these are two pipes. And in between these pipes is a manometer measuring the pressure difference between the two flowing fluids. As you can see, the blue color represents the water and the gray represents the oil, while the orange color represents the monometric liquid that is being used inside of our manometer. We are given various information about the working fluids along with the number of different measurements that will help us determine ultimately what the pressure difference is between the two pipes as we are asked for in our problem statement. Now to get started, let's hop back to page 104 of our NCES reference handbook and specifically hone in on what they're giving us for manometers. We are being given working formulas for one specific situation, and that being an open-ended, what's called a U-tube manometer. But that's not a problem because as you can see, we are going to be using specifically the pressure height relationship to build out our formulas for any situation that we encounter. So even though we're presented with only one situation, one scenario here in an open-ended U-tube manometer, as long as we understand our pressure height relationship inside a static liquid, we can build out the most complex systems uh, and we can represent the most complex systems um, in, in a, some type of formula. And you'll see, we'll get complex. Now, knowing the foundation of why and how these formulas are put together will be loads more valuable to you come exam day than memorizing this single scenario because believe me, the NCES isn't going to stick to the, these cookie cutter type problems we're used to seeing in our practice. We've got to step out of the box. We've got to be re ready for whatever they throw at us. And as long as you understand, understand once again, the foundational building blocks of how to assess any type of manometer, you're going to dominate these types of problems on the exam, no matter how complicated they try to make them. So let's go step by step through how this formula on the right there, I pulled it out. Let's uh, go step by step to see how this formula is put together. First, it is written defining the pressure P naught within the unmarked pipe. From there, it starts off at the final pressure point that they are interested in, which is P2. Now they just take a step backwards towards P naught using the established guidelines and the general formulas of the pressure height relationship. So this is where it's going to come into play, these, this pressure height relationship. So from point two, we are starting at the top of fluid two and going downwards a distance of H2. Fluid two has some specific weight defined or a specific gravity or even a density. And because of that, we are able to determine the values we need to plug in and assess exactly how the pressure is going to be affected based on this elevation change. So now that we're at the end of um, the fluid two, which is the bottom of fluid one, as I just hi highlighted, we need to rise upwards towards the axis of P naught. Again, fluid one has some specific weight defined. It has a specific gravity or density again. And because of that, once again, we are able to determine the values we need to plug in and assess exactly how this pressure is affected over this region. Now we are rising and based on our knowledge of the pressure height relationship, we know that our pressure will be decreasing accordingly. And that's why you see the negative sign in front of this value. And that's it. Really, all they did was start with 
the pressure they're looking for, P naught, they went upwards towards the, the pressure they're trying to figure out, P2, and then they work their self, themselves backwards using the pressure height relationship of a static liquid, developing plus um, adding terms and subtracting terms based on the elevation change. Again, this is a simple open-ended YouTube manometer, but really no matter how complex the measuring device gets, the steps will be the same, adding and subtracting values once again as we make our way through the unit. So let's go ahead and grab this general formula and bring it back over to the problem we are working. Although it's not going to fit exactly this particular setup, it's still useful to have it in our site. So as we go through setting up the formula, we can always revert back to understanding how the NCES lays it out. Now the general formula is set up using just two working fluids. Whereas in our problem, we have three. We have water, which has a specific gravity of 9,810 newtons per cubic meter. We have an undefined monometric liquid with a specific gravity of 1.25. And we have oil with a specific gravity of 0.88. With three different working fluids, we will be making three adjustments to our pressure as we make our way from one pipe to the other. In, a, in our problem, we are asked to determine the pressure difference between the two pipes based on the information that we are given. So we will start at the center point of our water pipe, which I just denoted with zero, working downward to the top of our monometric liquid, which I just denoted with 0.1, and then we'll around the bend and up to the top of the monometric liquid in the right limb, and finally upwards to the center of our oil pipe. Dimensions are given for each elevation change that we are making, so let's go ahead and start formulating our equation. Starting at the center point of our water pipe and staying in line with the general formula, we are given in the NCES reference handbook we know that our first point of information we want is the pressure at point three. This will allow us to determine the difference in pressures between the two pipes. So we write it out as such. That's the start. From point zero, we will be descending to point one at the top of the monometric liquid. Our pressure height relationship tells us that with the negative elevation change, we will be increasing the pressure Hence, we will be taking the specific gravity of water and the height in which it descends and adding this value as shown. We will be working from this point around the bend and upwards to point two, which is at the top of the monometric liquid in the right limb of the manometer. And we know the specific gravity, but we don't know the specific weight of this fluid. So the question then is, what do we do? What should we do since we don't know the specific weight of this particular liquid? What we're going to do is actually take the relationship that we learned last cram session or our previous cram session on fluid properties, the relationship between the specific weight of a liquid and the specific weight of water. And when we use that, as long as we know the specific gravity, we already know the specific weight of water we'll be able to plug in those two uh, values and determine the specific weight of whatever liquid we're working with. We are also adding this value in our formula. Why are we adding this value in our formula? Since we went from point one, we went around a bend and then we went up to point two. Why are we adding it? Even though we're going down, we're going over and then up to point two, the, the sum or the, um, the net elevation change is negative. We actually went down two meters. So that's really what we're looking from point one to point two, we went down two meters and pressure increases with depth as we know from our pressure height relationship in a static liquid. 
So last, we go from point two upwards to point three, which is the center line of our oil pipe. Again, we know that the specific gravity, but we don't know the specific weight. So it looks like, once again, we're going to use our knowledge of fluid properties and specifically how the specific gravity relates to specific weight. We're gonna pull our knowledge of that to start assessing a few specific weights of some, some liquids that we have defined here with specific gravities. So I hope you all paid attention during that point in a past cram session. Now we also know the height here, and since we are as, uh, ascending, we're going upwards, we will be subtracting this value in line with our knowledge again of the pressure height relationship. So there you have it. That's what our final formula for assessing the pressure difference between these, these two pipes will look like. I took out all the references to the points and put in the specific weights and the heights according to the fluids that we are working with. 